Uh, how long have you been in Egypt? And I want to ask one more question. Why you, uh, did you visit Egypt in general? Um, I've been here for two months. Mm. And I came here to study Arabic, inshallah. Mm. Mm. Uh, Fusa, Arabic. What wow. was your religion before Islam? And I want you to make some sort of comments about this part of your life before accepting Islam. Well, I would have to say that I, I really I have to des divide my religion before Islam into two sections. Mm. There, the first answer is that I was born into a uh, Christian family, which is uh, there the the particular sect of Christianity was Baptist, mm. which is Protestant, um, and. I can talk about this portion of my life that uh, really I, I had no doubt in this uh, this belief uh, when I was particularly when I was younger, and I did find a lot of comfort really when reading the the Bible, a lot of peace and and so on. But as you you get older, actually the analogy I've heard is that that faith, iman, is sometimes like a cup. When you're a kid, the cup is smaller, so you have to fill it with less. But when you get older, the cup gets bigger, and you need more to fill it. So this led me to the conclusion that, you know, the world is full of religion. There's many different religions, uh, and you have to be sure. It's like mm. I said on the last program, that we every, every human being, the heart wants yaqeen. It wants certainty. It's looking, your heart is looking for the creator of the heart, right? Mm. This is the natural uh, state of your of the human being. And so I was looking for this yaqeen or this certainty, even though I was born into a religion that brought me some comfort. I still felt fear. I had like, it's like a natural taqwa, you know. Mm -hmm. I want to make sure that I'm on the right path. Um, and so I, that's when I began to, dist uh, to study different religions. Um, and I studied every religion that I could, fi that I could find a book about, mm -hmm. uh, whether it was New Age uh, philosophy or, uh, you know, they call it New Age philosophy. Or they also, uh, I, I don't know, they mm. have different words for it, different mm. yeah. uh, words for it. And then I would study uh, Buddhism, Hinduism. This is the natural route that the American will go. Which is why if you go to America, actually, you'll find a lot of people who aren't Christian, and you ask them their religion, and they'll say things like agnostic, Buddhist, really, and they're American. Because they only take it so far, you know. They only take the, the study of religion so far. But I kept going. Nothing was really satisfactory to me uh, until I had that yaqeen, until I read certain things about Islam, was making a comparison between the Quran, the Bible, uh, reading sirah, and really soaking in the deen, hmm. you know. And once I did that and I found that yaqeen, uh, then it was like a whole new level. It was a new level of, of faith, and the big, the cup of faith, the cup of iman, it grew and was full. It was full when I began to study Islam. What did you discover when you began studying Islam, studying uh, the life of Prophet Muhammad? The f this is such a big, uh, big question. The I, I can tell you, I can quote a non-Muslim who studied his life, a Christian named Montgomery Watt. Shalom. He was Shalom. studying the life of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he said, and I'm quoting, to suppose Muhammad as an imposter, meaning a liar, raises more problems than it solves. This is his quote. Because when you study his life, you see someone that was devoted completely to his Rabb, to his Lord. Uh, and even the non-Muslims, admit this, they have to, because they see certain things. For example, when he was in the cave with Abu Bakr, right? And the Meccans are coming to him, and Abu Bakr as-Siddiq, radiallahu what does he say? He says, you know, he's like worried, right? So Rasulullah does he say, okay, let's try to find a back way out of the cave? No. Does he say, uh, let's hide further, let's go back and, and hide? Or, or does he really, does Rasulullah wasallam does he start to sweat or something? No. He says, relax, Allah is with us, right? This shows you that he is sincere, that mm -hmm. his heart is absolutely confirmed in his belief. And when you look to the life of Rasulullah you see struggle, you see trial. I mean, all of his children died except Fatima in his life, right? Thirteen assassination attempts, thirteen assassination attempts on his life.
And never once do you hear him complaining to a human being. Never. The only time you hear him complain, you can read all through hadith and all through sirah, is when he's complaining to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is what anybody who has even a 10% open mind, when they read sirah and they read hadith, they will come away with no doubt that this is one of the most influential and beautiful people to have ever lived, and he believed he was a prophet. There was no doubt in his mind. Now, some people will say, in fact, my wife asked me this question. If you were, my wife also converted to Islam. And if you were to ask her what convinced her, she will tell you this story. That she came to this same conclusion, it's difficult to call Muhammad Wasallam and say that he was faking it or something like this. We know this is not feasible. But your mind has natural questions. Maybe he was, was sincere, but what if he was crazy, right? It was delusion. But it's a natural thought process. Well, then you will see something uh, very interesting. During his life, when his son, Ibrahim, passed away, the Muslims began to circulate uh, the eclipse of the sun. You know, the sun went, had an eclipse, the sky went dark. The Muslims began to circulate this as a miracle, right? They used to say, uh, you know, it's a miracle. Your son died, the sky goes dark. Now, I'm saying if he is insane or crazy, but if he was, he would believe this, right? He would say, it's right, it has to be a miracle. Because he's going through something very emotionally difficult. And anybody who studied psychology, they will tell you that when you're going through something very difficult emotionally, you're more prone to give in to your delusion. But his response was what? He said, the sun and the moon are signs of Allah, and they do not eclipse for the birth or death of any man. That mean? So the only thing, the only conclusion you can draw, if you even have 10% open mind, is that he was who he said he was, which was the Rasul of Allah. Are those whose strength in you is in you, who have set their hearts on pilgrimage, as they pass through the valley of Bekka. So they go to pilgrimage and they pass through the valley of Bekka. Who do you know in Christianity or Judaism make pilgrimage through the valley of Bekka? I would like Brother Psalms Ken to give you verse 27. Pay attention to this verse. But will God really dwell on earth? The heaven, even the highest heaven, cannot contain you. How much less this house that I have built. Job chapter 9 verse 32. He, God, is not a man like me that I might answer him. Job chapter 25 verses 4 through 6. It says, How much less than man who is but a maggot, a son of man who is only a worm. Seventy-three times, I believe it is, in the New Testament, Jesus refers to himself as the son of man. Surely you don't believe that he's a worm. And surely you don't believe that this God is... This is the point or the time after all these debates since the concept of Islam till now. I think all of you get a better picture and you can make your choice. Even Brother Ken said, now it's your decision. You can make your own choice. If anybody, and I'm asking anybody, if anybody sees that the truth is Islam and he wants to become a Muslim right now please come here come on Islam is based on five things you have to do it you have to believe that there is no God but Allah. And you have to say it. And you have to believe that Prophet Muhammad is his servant and messenger. And you have to say it. So I will say it in English so you will understand what I'm saying. And then you will repeat after me in English and Arabic. Okay? I bear witness that there is no God but Allah. There is no God but Allah. And I bear witness and I bear witness that Muhammad, that Muhammad is his servant and messenger. Is his servant and messenger. I will say it in, Ang in Arabic and please repeat after me. Ashhadu Ashhadu Anna Anna La La Ilaha Ilaha Illa Illa Allah 
Rasulullah. Rasulullah. Allahu Akbar. You can have a seat.